副部长钱克明先生跟大家见面，介绍有关情况，并回答各位关心的问题。现在我们先请王文涛部长介绍情况。谢谢主持人，各位媒体的朋友，大家下午好，很高兴。跟大家在这里见面。首先呢，我代表商务部向关心和支持我们商务工作的媒体的朋友们表示衷心的感谢。二零二零年，面对非常严峻复杂的啊，特别是疫情带来的这个国际形势，在以习近平同志为核心的党中央的。坚强领导下，商务部统筹推进疫情防控和经济社会发展，扎实做好六本工作，全面落实六保任务，稳住了外贸外资的基本盘，推动了。消费的回升，取得了多双边经贸关系的新的突破，实现了商务发展维稳向好，好于预期，为国民经济发展呢做出了积极的贡献。今年，商务部将以习近平新时代中国特色社会主义思想为指导。准确把握新发展阶段，深入贯彻新发展理念，加快构建新发展格局，努力推动商务高质量发展，在新征程中迈好第一步，见到新气象，以优异成绩庆祝建党一百周年。下面呢，我和我的同事王寿文副部长、钱克明副部长愿意。回答大家的提问。好，下面欢迎各位提问。提问之前，先通报一下自己所代表的新闻机构。谢谢。好，那个那位女士，第四排那位女士。谢谢主持人。谢谢主持人。第一财经提问。呃，那么受到新冠肺炎疫情等多重因素的影响，那么其实呃，今年有很对于我国这个今年外贸形势啊，呃，外贸方面的一些压力呢，其实外界有很多的判断。那么，请问您怎么看今年我国这个在外贸进出口方面的一个呃形势？那么，另外商务部未来还会有哪些这个稳外贸的政策措施，呃，能够帮助外贸企业能够稳住产业链和供应链？谢谢。好，谢谢。<咳>你的提问是，怎么来判断今年外贸的形势啊？下一步我们对对外贸企业啊有些什么样的啊稳外贸的措施？呃，我想呢，这个我们先简单的。回顾一下去年，应该说呢，去年啊，总书记啊，做出了稳外贸、稳外资基本盘的重要部署，围绕这个稳基本盘，国务院出台了一系列的政策，在有关部门地方的共同努力下，特别是广大外贸企业迎难而上，奋力拼搏。去年应该说。我们盖过，可以说是极不平凡啊，成绩斐然。我们可以从整个的数据来看，去年呢，我们货物进出口是三十二点二万，增长百分之一点九。这个一点九可以展现出三个方面，一个方面是全球唯一实现贸易正增长的主要经济体。第二个方面呢，我们这一点九啊。在外贸的规模和国际份额创了历史新高。第三个呢，全球第一贸易大国的地位更加巩固。那么这是去年，今年形势怎么判断？应该说呢，我们判断还是严峻复杂。主要是因为从这个需求来说呢，大家都知道新冠肺炎的这个整个的疫情的情况呢，还是有一些起伏，不明朗，不确定，所以呢，带来了我们
对今年外贸形势的判断啊是严峻复杂。还有一个就是供应链、产业链影响稳定的因素呢，仍然在发展。我们将会采取什么样的措施？我们将坚决稳住外贸外资的基本盘。今年还是以这个目标稳住基本盘，重点实施又进又出计划、贸易产业融合计划和贸易畅通计划。具体的来说呢，大概有这么几个方面：一呢是要继续加强政策支持，我们将会同地方和有关部门保持政策的连续性、稳定性和可持续性。我们现在在定期的啊，这个听取外贸企业的一些反映的问题和呼声，比如说，在解决啊国际物流不畅啊物流成本啊偏高，比如说巩固提升出口信用保险，还比如说。抓好抓实外贸信贷的投放，再比如说支持外贸企业稳岗扩岗等等等等。我们在听取外贸企业的一些诉求，诉我们会从原来的这个政策。I think that we will listen to the opinions of these companies to ensure that our policies remain consistent, stable, and sustainable. And also, given the new circumstances, we will timely adjust our policies to stabilize our fundamentals. Second, we will also ensure the smooth and stable operations of our industrial and supply chain. We will identify a new number of new bases for upgrade and transformation of foreign trade. We will cultivate a number of processing trade industrial parts, encourage the integration of companies into global and regional industrial and value chains, and also to build a number of new demonstration zones for import promotion. And thirdly, we will help foreign company or foreign trade companies stabilize and secure their orders and explore new markets. We will give the platforms a greater role. We have some very good platforms which are going to play a better role this year. We're going to ensure that we host the full CIE well. We're going to host the CIFTIS 2021 well. We're also going to make good use of such important platforms as the Canton Fair, as well as the first China International Consumer Product Expo. In order to contribute to a stable market for our companies, at the same time as the situation evolves under the pandemic, we will focus both on offline as well as online marketing. We will support the upgrade and development of overseas warehouses. And we will support the integration of domestic and foreign trade. We are going to work together with more trading partners, especially those along the Belt and Road, to negotiate and establish working mechanisms for unimpeded trade in order to create a sound international environment for their efforts to explore the international market. And fourth is to cultivate proactively new business forms and business models for foreign trade. Entering into the new years, or over the recent years, new business formats and Bottles have played an important role, including cross-border e-commerce and market procurement trade. In 2020, the total value of cross-border e-commerce amounted to 1.69 trillion RMB yuan, up by 31.1%. And the total number of pilot programs for market procurement was 31, and in 2020, the total export of market procurement trade was as high as 704.54 trillion RMB. 704.54 billion RMB up by 24, 25.2%. So these uh, are the things that we're going to work on this year to continue to support in order to stabilize foreign trade this year. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you. The 
近日召开的中央深海委会议再次强调要建设现代流通体系。请问商务部在具体落实上有什么考虑？如何建设现代商务流通体系？呃，这个问题还是我来回答。大家都知道，流通的一头连着，连着生产线一头，一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头一头
our, our circulation enterprises or players are still lagging behind in terms of competitiveness. So we need to uh, make good use of the broad application of such new technologies as 5G, the Internet of Things, and our artificial intelligence, because these technologies actually provide logistic companies an opportunity to catch up with international peers. And many companies are actually in a position to uh, to to achieve development in terms of uh, the digital development, they're using uh, digital technology, cloud computing, and mobile internet. So they'll be able to make uh, leapfrog development by using these technologies. And fourth is to improve the development mode or method of circulation. We would encourage uh, innovation and transformation uh, because we have uh, across the country supermarkets, stores and grocery stores which are brick and mortar businesses and we encourage these uh, businesses to transform uh, by using digital smart technologies and to have cross-sectoral integration. We're seeing some of these companies actually now not only selling things but also engaged in express uh, delivery service etc. And we're going to also develop green circulation. And number five is that we will improve the level of uh, the modernization of in, uh, supply chains. The key will be to encourage uh, the innovation of supply chains as well as the creation of demonstration programs for the application of uh, such innovation. And number six is to improve the integration of domestic and foreign trade. We need to open up or break through the choke points in linking domestic and foreign trade and at the same time uh, ensure that there are smooth channels linking domestic and foreign markets and the key to that is to ensure that we have more convergence in terms of uh, laws and regulations accreditation and certification uh, regulation and standards there is still uh, not enough work done in terms of connecting domestic trade with foreign trade so going forward, it is our job to expand uh, that integration process in terms of laws and regulations, certification, accreditation, uh, quality standards, etc. We've been working on this, but we are going to step up efforts going forward to increase the integration of domestic and foreign trade. So these are the four, six areas of work that we're going to focus on in addressing your question. Uh, next question, lady in the second row. Thank you. Uh, from... Uh, China Review, Hong Kong. What's uh, MOFCOM's view on China-US economic and trade relations going forward? The international community has been very much focused on this, especially whether or not China and the United States could re-establish a bilateral trade and economic uh, uh, communication dialogue. So you are with uh, Hong Kong uh, Media, and uh, I think that your question is uh, very uh, uh, much focused on or a uh, question. And I'd be happy to come to your question. On the 11th of uh, February, President Xi Jinping made a telephone call with President Biden of the United States to have an uh, in-depth exchange of views on developing China-U.S. relations and also to chart the course for the bilateral trade and economic relations going forward. China always believes that the fundamental essence of China-U.S. economic trade relationship is about mutual benefit and win-win. The interests of the two sides are deeply intertwined and uh, a peaceful, harmonious relationship makes both sides winners and a confrontational one uh, makes both sides losers. Cooperation is the only correct choice and in retrospect, the year two, uh, 2020 was affected by COVID-19 pandemic and global trade was uh, in the doldrums. However, China-U.S. trade uh, backed the trend and registered a year-on-year -year increase. Uh, and also China was the biggest trading partner of the United States. And our bilateral trade, as well as investment cooperation, contributed positively to our respective economic recoveries. So this shows that trade and economic cooperation is an active force driving our relationship and also brings real benefits to both sides. In his telephone conversation with President Biden, President Xi emphasized in particular that China and the United States should reestablish various dialogue mechanisms to accurately understand each other's policy intentions and to avoid misunderstanding and miscalculation. China stands ready to enhance exchanges between the two countryside on the trade and economic front and to carry out cooperation on the basis of mutual respect, equality and mutual benefit to benefit our peoples 
and also to benefit the world. And moving forward, I look forward to working together with my US colleagues to follow through the spirit of the conversation of our presidents, to enhance communication, build understanding, focus co on cooperation, and manage and control our differences in order to bring our bilateral trade and economic relations back to the normal track. Thank you. Next question. The gentleman in the second row. Thank you from Market News International. After signing ASEP, China says that it will favorably consider joining the CPTPP. In this regard, what will be the specific work that you are going to do, and do you have a timetable? And what are the uh, challenges that will bring by joining the CPTPP in terms of IP protection, environmental standards, and labor protection? I've already answered lots of questions. I'd like to turn to my colleague, Vice Minister Wang Shouwen, to answer this question. Thank you for your question. On November the 20th last year, President Xi Jinping said at the 27th APEC Economic Leaders Meeting that China would, consider, would favorably consider joining the CPTPP. And last December, the Central Economic Work Conference reaffirmed that China would favorably consider joining the CPTPP. Just like you said, CPTPP covers lots of elements and contents. We are doing work in two areas. First, internally, we are evaluating all the clauses of CPTPP, including those you have mentioned, for in-depth research and analysis. So we are doing our internal homework. And externally, with some of the uh, CPTPP members, we've had some informal engagements. And we plan to have more informal engagements with other members to have technical communications and exchanges on related issues so that we can have a better understanding and grasp of related issues. Next question. The lady in the second row. From Phoenix Satellite TV, this question relates to WTO reform. We know that this year marks the 20th anniversary of China's succession to the WTO reform, which uh, faces lots of um, challenges. What are China's considerations in promoting WTO reform, and what work will you do? Still, Vice Minister Wang Shouwen. Well, thank you for your question. This year marks the 20th anniversary of China's succession to the WTO. To put it simply, in the past two decades, China has actively honored its obligations as WTO member. We opened up our markets and honored our commitments. We actively took part in WTO negotiations, including the negotiations on the Trade Facilitation Agreement and the expansion negotiations for ITA, and also on the uh, subsidies on agricultural products negotiations, etc. China has also actively notified the WTO of our reforms as well as policy changes and accepted on seven TPRs by the WTO. This year, we are going to have the eighth trade policy review at the WTO. We also established a China program together with the Secretariat of the WTO to help the uh, least developed countries to integrate into the WTO's institutions and mechanisms. And you may know that after the uh, appellate body of the dispute settlement mechanism became dysfunctional, China and 
the EU and other members worked together and established an MPIA. As a member, through these efforts, China has contributed to the authority and efficacy of the WTO. Like you mentioned, the WTO has come across some difficulties and needs to reform. And some of the uh, difficulties are caused by unilateralism and protectionism. And the appellate body has become dysfunctional. And WTO negotiations have come across great difficulties. So China supports necessary reform of the WTO. In this regard, you may have noted that on February the 15th, the uh, WTO appointed new Director General, Dr. Iwela, and China will actively support her work as Director General of the WTO. We also hope that she can promptly restore the normal functions of the WTO. This year, there will be MC12 of the WTO. We hope that this meeting can be a success, especially by securing outcomes in fisheries subsidies negotiations. Regarding WTO reform, we published our position paper. And regarding our specific recommendations for WTO reform, we also notified the WTO Secretariat of our recommendations. We believe, first and foremost, the WTO needs to restore the normal functioning of the appellate body. With the normal functioning of the appellate body, we can effectively reject unilateralism and trade protectionism. At the same time, we believe for over-subsidizing in agriculture, we also need reform to deal with it, especially some developed countries have massive subsidies for agriculture. And developing members are very concerned about the uh, public stockholding of food for security purposes, among other issues. We believe, and these should also be the priority issues in WTO reform. Besides, we know that the WTO was established in 1995. So 25 years has passed. In the interim, world economy, trade, cross-border investment have undergone great changes. For example, there was few trading services 25 years ago. Cross-border investment has also boomed, and e-commerce is burgeoning. We hope that the WTO can evolve with the times, and in terms of services domestic regulation, investment facilitation, and e-commerce, we hope the WTO can reach a series of consensuses. Not long ago, the World Economic Forum held a virtual event of the Davos Agenda, where President Xi Jinping made a special address. He said that we should build an open world economy and uphold the multilateral trading system. We should promote WTO reform and provide development space for developing countries. China is at a new development stage, promoting the building of a new development paradigm. In this process, we will further enhance the level of opening up. We'd like to work with other members of the WTO to continue to support the authority and efficacy of the WTO and as the world's largest developing country. Under the principle of balanced rights and obligations, we'd like to fulfill our obligations and make our contributions. Thank you. Next question. That lady, please, at the front. Thank you, CNBC. 
in accelerating high quality commerce development. What will be your special considerations and measures for e-commerce development? I will ask my colleague, Vice Minister Qian Keming, to answer this question. Thank you for your question. E-commerce has been growing very fast in recent years. Accompanying the development of new wave of science and technology revolution and industrial revolution, China is leading the world in terms of e-commerce development, which profoundly changes the ways of people's production and life, especially since the outbreak of the pandemic. We have all experienced the uh, growth of e-commerce. Online shopping has become a very important channel for consumption. Last year, physical goods online shopping accounted for nearly a quarter of China's total retail sales of consumer goods. And since the outbreak of the pandemic, in terms of pandemic response and supply security and resumption of work and production and also consumption on bounce back, e-commerce has played a very important role, becoming a stabilizer of economic and social development. Long, long ago, MOFCOM, together with related departments, guided and organized the 2021 Chinese New Year online uh, shopping festival with the retail sales of over 900 billion RMB, ensuring market supply for Chinese New Year, as well as the uh, state put celebrations of the Chinese New Year. As the uh, competent authorities of e-commerce, MOFCOM has uh, paid equal attention to development and regulation and continuously improved the environment of e-commerce. This year, we will focus on the following areas. First, we will do a good job in top-down design. Currently, we are developing on the uh, development plan for e-commerce during the 14th five-year period. We will base on the new development stage, enforce new development philosophy, and serve the uh, building of new development paradigm. We put forward the goals for quality e-commerce development, as well as the uh, main tasks and guarantee measures to provide new dynamics for the development of modernized socialist country. Second, we will promote innovative development we will acti actively develop a new consumption, accelerate faster on streamlining e-commerce, fresh goods, e-commerce, among other new business types and models, and actively foster brand and quality online shopping festival, as well as other consumption upgrade platforms to enrich online consumption contents and scenes. And we will also promote online offline integration and support the uh, digital transformation of physical businesses. We will also develop e-commerce in the countryside. We will effectively connect e-commerce with the uh, poverty alleviation and the rejuvenation of the countryside and coordinate government and social resources, promote uh, digital commerce, energizing the countryside, develop on rural e-commerce, new infrastructure, and expand the uh, coverage of e-commerce in the countryside. Help on um, farmers increase their income. We will also develop cross-border e-commerce. Expand the uh, circle of friends of Silk Road e-commerce. Deepen e-commerce exchange and cooperation with Belt and Road partners. At the same time, we see that with the uh, rapid development of e-commerce, unfair competition, and alleged monopoly, are drawing wide attention. MOFCOM will strengthen e-commerce industry management. On the one hand, we will provide positive guidance and improve the uh, development of e-commerce integrity system and push them to honor their commitments and also establish their uh, credit and integrity files, promote industry self-regulation. On the other hand, we are going to strengthen rigid discipline and push for the improvement of laws and regulations of e-commerce and prevent orderly expansion and work with related departments to maintain fair competition and market order. The lady in the fourth row. Thank you. Jiemian.com. This question on concerns stabilizing foreign investment. In 2020, China's FDI utilization bucked the trend and became the largest in the world. 
The figures in January show that China's FDI growth performed even better than 2020. Do you think this trend will continue? What is Mofcom's outlook on FDI utilization this year? And with the uh, global rollout of vaccines against the pandemic, and many countries are introducing policies to boost the economy. And there will be fiercer competition for foreign investment. What measures will Mofcom take to stabilize China's FDI? Well, let me uh, take this question. Like you said, last year, China's non-financial FDI utilization grew by 4.5%, which made China the world's largest destination of foreign investment. Like you said, in January, the situation was also very bullish. But in terms of our assessment for the whole year, just like what we have said about trade, on, we believe the situation is grave and complicated with lots of uncertainties. Partially, the uncertainties come from the pandemic and economic recovery situation. And on the other hand, the competition for foreign investment is getting fiercer and fiercer, but we've also seen some opportunities. Some institutions have produced their own judgments, for example, According to UNCTAD, this year global FDI will dip further by 5 to 10 percent on top of the 4 of 42 percent of last year. So the situation is very grave. But we think at the same time there are opportunities. We will follow the plans of the CPC Central and the State Council to push for stabilized aggregate, optimized structure, and improved quality for FDI utility. We will focus on the following three areas. First, we will continue to unswervingly expand opening up. This is fundamental. President Xi said the door of China's opening up will only go wider and wider. From Mofcom's perspective, we will work to lower the threshold of opening up. We will advance the uh, implementation of the three negative lists, the national uh, edition, the pallet FTZ edition, as well as the FTP edition. We will also uh, implement the newly revised catalog of industries for encouraged foreign investment, which has seen an addition of 127 items. By doing this, we want to lower the threshold for foreign investment and create more investment opportunities and contribute the dividends of our reform and development. And second, with the door to the ASAC World Open, we want to make good use of the Open Up platforms. From the perspective of Mofcom, we will seize the uh, opportunities provided by the pilot free trade zones as well as the uh, national economic and technological development zones. We will also build and improve the FTP as well as the distribution of pilot free trade zones and implement the overall plan of the construction of Hainan on FTP. On the other hand, we have 217 economic development zones. Based on existing opening up, as well as the uh, new development paradigm, we want to push for the upgrade of the uh, national economic development zones as new high grounds of China's opening up. We will also push for the opening up of the services sector. For instance, we will launch comprehensive pilot and demonstration projects for the opening up of the services sector. We will also guide these 
areas with pilot projects to experiment their distinctive policies. Third, we will foster a more favorable business environment. China's ranking in the World Bank's Doing Business chart went up to the 31st place in 2019. So guided by the central authorities, we will government administration and services reform, protect the lawful rights and interests of foreign investors by enhancing our handling of foreign investors' complaints. In this way, we will build a business environment that's based on market principles governed by a sound legal framework and up to international standards. In this way, foreign investment enterprises will enjoy brighter prospects in China. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. From International Business Daily. As China and the EU has concluded the negotiations on the investment agreement in, princ in principle, what's your comment on the future of China-EU economic and trade relations? Thank you. China-EU relations is featured by a solid foundation, close high-level exchanges, and abundant economic and trade outcomes. In 2020, President Xi Jinping had 23 dialogues and phone calls with EU and European leaders. In February this year, President Xi Jinping chaired the China CEC Leader Summit with Central and Eastern Europe leaders. Premier Li Keqiang chaired the 22nd China-EU Leader Summit last year. These high-level exchanges pointed the way for an injected momentum into our bilateral economic and trade ties. China shares a close economic and trade tie with European countries. In 2020, as we fought the COVID-19 pandemic together, we have demonstrated strong resilience in this tie. Our trade volume with the EU reached $649.5 billion last year, making China the largest trading partner of the European Union. And our confidence in mutual investment remains high. With EU direct investment in China reaching $5.7 billion and China direct investment in the EU $4.7 billion. The China-EU Geographical Indications Agreement will come into effect very soon this year. Like you said, China and the EU have concluded the negotiations on the investment agreement at the end of last year. This is a hallmark and in the EU's terms a milestone in our economic and trade relations. It is a balanced, high standard, and mutually beneficial agreement. It will create more investment opportunities for our businesses and lead to the creation of a better business environment. It will benefit not only China, but also the EU and world economic recovery and growth. All parties enjoy benefits from this outcome. At present, legal scrubbing and translation of this agreement is underway for an early signing of the agreement, as agreed. I would like to re-emphasize that China and the EU are partners instead of rivals. We share more common grounds instead of areas of competition. We should expand our common interests in cooperation and address difficulties in our common development. China is ready to enhance cooperation in pandemic response, push forward practical cooperation in, e in commerce, green development and digital development, and safeguard a stable global industrial supply chains. 
so as to achieve world economic recovery in the post-pandemic world. Thank you. Next question. Thank you from Bloomberg. I would like to invite Vice Minister Wang Shuwen to answer this question. Thank you for your question. China-Australia economic and trade relations is built on a sound foundation. We have already signed a free trade agreement. For the past 12 years in a row, China has been Australia's largest trading partner in goods, the largest export market, and the largest source of import. Australia enjoys surplus in trading goods, trading services, and two-way investment. And Chinese investment in Australia is greater than Australia, that of Australia in China. We can say that Australia enjoys huge benefit in China-Australia economic and trade ties. Last year, due to the pandemic, global economy and trade suffered. Australia's foreign trade dropped by 7% year-on-year. However, Australia-China trade bucked the trend. Australia's Export to the rest of the world decreased by nearly 8%, but its export to China decreased by only around 3%. So these figures show the enormous benefit delivered by our bilateral economic and trade ties to Australia and, of course, to China. This is an important relationship that both sides should cherish and it deserves due attention. However, unfortunately, in Australia, some people are stigmatizing normal economic and trade exchanges and cooperation, even resorting to discriminatory measures. These measures have damaged the good atmosphere of our bilateral economic and trade cooperation. We believe that a sound and stable China-Australia relationship is, will be beneficial to our mutual interest. We hope that Australia could do more to benefit our mutual trust and cooperation and do more that's in line with the essence of our comprehensive strategic partnership, so as to bring our economic and trade ties back on normal track. Thank you. Next question. Thank you from China News Agency. There are reports that amid the pandemic, some projects under the Belt and Road Initiative are facing risks, some even facing risks of default. What will MOFCOM do to help businesses going global and participate in the Belt and Road Initiative? Thank you. I'd like to invite Vice Minister Qian Keming to take your question. Thank you for your question. By President Xi Jinping, since President Xi Jinping put forward the Belt and Road Initiative, China, together with relevant countries, has upheld the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits. We have deepened practical cooperation in all areas 
and yielded abundant outcomes. Belt and Road Cooperation has become a well-received international public good, contributing to an open world economy and a community with a shared future. In 2020, faced with negative elements such as the pandemic, China has worked with relevant countries, helped each other, and took on the challenge in solidarity. With these joint efforts, Belt and Road Cooperation saw new progress. Our trade in goods reached $1.35 trillion, up 0.7%. Non-financial direct investment in other Belt and Road countries was $17.79 billion, up 18.3%. Many key projects, including China Laos Railway, Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway, have seen positive progress. The fifth plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee made new di direction, uh, instructions on Belt and Road cooperation, which pointed the direction for our work in the next step. MOFCOM will firmly implement these instructions with uh, the uh, new development par paradigm as the central task. We will focus on Belt and Road economic and trade cooperation, push for high quality Belt and Road development. This year, we will focus in, we will put our focus in the following four aspects. First, improving the quality of trade. We will expand two-way trade with relevant countries, increase the import of quality products so that more countries could share the dividend of China's development. We will promote Silk Road e-commerce, push for the integration of cross-border e-commerce and other new business modes and models and the Belt and Road Initiative. We will also inject new momentum into uh, the China-Europe rail services and the International Land Sea Corridor. We will also build high quality freight trade zones to liberalize and facilitate Belt and Road cooperation. Second, introducing innovations in investment and cooperation by creating new ways of overseas direct investment, transforming and up upgrading construction contracts and exploring third-party market cooperation, we will foster a number of high-quality cooperation projects, implement foreign aid projects that improve people's livelihood. In the meantime, we will encourage capable Chinese companies go global and attract more investment from Belt and Road partners so as to build a mutually beneficial industrial and supply chains. Third, building platforms. We will hold successful events and expositions such as the fourth CIE, the 2021 CIFTIS, and make the best out of important platforms such as the Canton Fair, China ASEAN Expo, China Africa Economic and Trade Expo, China Arab States Expo, and China Russia Expo so as to prepare solid platforms for deeper Belt and Road economic and trade cooperation. Fourth, enhancing mechanisms. We will enhance uh, strategic planning and mechanism alignment with Belt and Road partners. Under such frameworks as joint committees and mixed committees, we will build more smooth trade working groups, investment cooperation working groups, and optimize relevant working mechanisms for trade and services and e-commerce so as to build sound institutional basis for the Belt and Road cooperation. Thank you. Last question. Thank you from Hong Kong, Bohemia. There are now 21 freight trade zones in China, pilot freight trade zones in China. What roles will they play in the future and what will Hainan Freight Trade Port play in the future? Thank you. I will take your question. President, uh, General Secretary Xi Jinping stressed the connection of building the development paradigm and developing freight trade zones and pilot freight trade zones to build a new high ground f for reform and opening up. Like you said, there are now 21 pilot freight trade zones located across China. They have 
introduced 260 institutional innovations nationwide. Together, they are effective test fields in China's efforts to deepen overall reform and expand opening up. So that's a key role that they are playing. Particularly as China is creating a new development, development paradigm, they enjoy unique advantages and there's a lot that they can do in the future. Our work will be carried out in the following four aspects. First, we will connect markets. Connect, second, we will connect rules. Third, we will connect industries. And fourth, we will connect innovative measures. Let me elaborate on these points. First, we will push for market connectivity via deep reform. We will grant pilot trade trade zones greater autonomy in their reforms, since they are the test field for uh, comprehensively deepening reform. We will also put forward more experiment items for in-depth reform to unclog the connectivity between domestic and international markets. This will for help us optimize the business environment that's market-oriented, law-based, and up to international standards. It will also tap into the vitality of market entities and lead to more institutional innovations, which will be introduced nationwide. Second, we will work f f to connect and align the rules with high level opening up. We should push for both opening up featured by the flow of factors and opening up featured by the alignment of institutions. So in pilot free trade zones, we will require them align themselves with high level international economic and trade rules. A step in this direction would be uh, negative lists for cross-border trade and services. We will also push for institutional openness in rules, regulations, administration, and standards so as to achieve opening, opening up at a higher level and at a larger scale. Third, we should connect industries with the openness of industrial chains for industrial integration. We will support uh, pilot trade trade zones with their strategic positioning and the resource endowment to develop on the basis of China's massive market, foster their characteristic and competitive industries, gather high quality market entities so as to lead the transformation and upgrading of domestic industries, improve the industrial and supply chains, as well as stability of these industrial and supply chains. Fourth, we will connect their innovation efforts through the concentration of high-end factors. We will support pilot FTZs to bring together more high-end talent, capital, technology, and data as factors of production to enhance international exchange and cooperation within this region, and also to focus on basic research and original innovation to turn them into the birthplace of technological innovation in order to inject new lease of life into high quality development, especially innovative development. I would like to highlight the Hainan Free Trade Port in particular. The development of Hainan Free Trade Port 
is a benchmark and a banner of China's reform and opening up. It is also an important measure and a brand new exploration. Since the beginning of last year, the master plan of the development of Hainan Free Trade Port was published, and there have been gratifying signs and progress with regard to the development of the port. According to our statistics available, last year the regional GDP increased by 3.5% year on year, higher than the national 2.3% average. And trading goods actually increased by 3% uh, year on year. That's uh, the total import and export of that province, which was also higher than the national average. As I have said, that after the master plan was published, there has been a, a synergistic effect taking place as this new policy uh, is put in place. And last year, we saw a 30.9% increase in terms of the number of newly registered or newly established market entities. And uh, a number uh, of total of 1,005 or a increase of 197.3% increase in terms of newly established FIEs. So people also quite focused on or paying quite a lot of attention on the policy of duty-free uh, uh, policy for the island. And we have actually witnessed a uh, two times increase in terms of the daily sales of duty-free shopping. So we have seen that this policy is gradually taking effect, and we are confident that this policy or the development of this port uh, shares a very bright prospect. Going forward, we will continue to have in-depth uh, study and implementation of uh, the spirit of uh, the important instructions of President Xi Jinping on developing the Hainan Free Trade Port, and we will revolve around the major national strategies of the country uh, to substantiate and implement the various policies and measures of the state, of uh, as enshrined in the master plan, to continuously improve the level of uh, trade and investment liberalization and facilitation in order to strive for greater progress in developing the free trade port of Hainan. Thank you. I'd like to that now thank uh, Minister Wang Wentao, uh, Vice Minister Wang Shouwen and Chen Keming. Uh, and also I'd like to thank our friends from the press. And that's the end of today's conference, tele uh, press conference. Thank you.